SimSol provides you with a library of industry forms and reports that are very easy to use and contain some unique features that will save you a tremendous amount of time as you're documenting your claim files. Now there are two different sections within a claim file, one for reports and one for forms. They both behave a little bit differently, but do have some common features that will help you get through the process very quickly. So let's first take a look at reports. Now to use either of these functions, we do need to be in the actual claim file. So as you can see, I've got a claim opened up, and I'm going to go ahead and click on reports here in the claim tree. Now one of the things mentioned in an earlier video about the claim enclosure tree is you can either create a new item by right clicking on that item in the tree, or there are speed buttons at the top of the screen that will let you create a new item too. So as I go up to the top of the screen, I can go up here to report and click that option. And by doing so, a brand new blank report is created. SimSol will automatically name the report based off the number of reports you've inserted into this claim thus far. For this claim, you can see I'm on report number 8. Obviously, you'll end up changing the name to whatever this report is going to be. So as you look at the reporting tool, you can see it's laid out pretty much like most other text editors you'd find. There's options to style your text, format paragraphs and columns, spell check, as well as the ability to create tables and fields. You'll always have the option to create a report from scratch. Just simply click on the screen and start typing. The problem with that is creating reports from scratch obviously is going to take you a very long time. So what we recommend doing is taking advantage of the library of reports that we provide for you. So after creating this new report, I can come up here to the top menu in the reporter and the second button over, if I hover over that, you'll see is Insert Template. If I click on that button, it brings up a library of different report templates that we've made available to you. As you start to compile more and more reports, you can categorize them into different groups over here on the left. By default, we've got a group called Standard Templates, and that's where you'll find a majority of the ones we provide for you. I can scroll down this list on the right and view all the available reports that the SimSol comes installed with. The example report I'm going to use here is called Settlement Instructions. I'll highlight that and click Open. And just like that, you can see the Settlement Instructions report has now inserted into my claim file. Let me go ahead and get rid of this text that I typed in as an example from before, just to clean up our report a little bit. So using the text editor, I can scroll up and down this report, and this is a live report, so I can place my cursor anywhere, make changes, make edits to this report, and save those changes if I ever want to use this report again in the future. Now as you look at this report, you'll notice these red fields that fall throughout the report. Those are called merge fields. These are very important to helping you get these reports done quickly. The function of these merge fields is to take loss or claim information from the claim that you're currently in and drop them into the corresponding named fields. So say for instance this field here is called date of loss. When I go to print this report, this is where the actual date of loss of the claim will print. Another example would be these fields up at the top, primary insured first name and primary insured last name. At any time, I can come up to the top of the reporter screen and click this checkbox here called Locked. By doing so, it will give me an actual view of what this report will look like when I print. You can see the insured's name is filled out, the date of loss is filled out, and any other information that shows up in red denotes information that came from a merge field displaying actual claim data. So as you can imagine, that's very useful because I can use this report in any claim that I've got within my system and it'll take the information from the claim I'm currently in and put it into this report. It's a great boiler template and it saves me a ton of time having to retype in claimant loss information or insured information. So when I'm in this preview mode, one thing I can't do is change anything in the report. I can highlight text, but I cannot change it. I can't change it until I come back up to the top and unlock this report. I'll get a confirmation to unlock it, I'll say yes, and now I'm returned back to a view in which I can edit this report. Now not only do our reports contain these merge fields that you can use by default, you can even add your own merge fields. Adding your own merge field is simple. If I go to the report, and let's say I'll create a new line here, I'm just going to add a sentence. The adjuster's last name, and I'll put colon there and space. 
So if that's where I want the adjuster's last name to appear, all I do is on the report, wherever my cursor is currently residing, I right click, and that brings up our merge field library. The merge field library contains all these different informational groups that I can select from. Each group has available fields that I can pick from as well. So you can see the very first group is adjuster information. For our example, we want the adjuster's last name. So I'm going to look through this list until I find adjuster's last name, which happens to be the fifth one down. I'll highlight it and hit accept. You'll see what that did. It dropped the merge field adjuster last name there. And now if I go back up to the lock option to preview this report and click it, you'll see that's exactly what it did. It took the loss information, the adjuster's last name, and dropped it right into the middle of that sentence. So theoretically, you could have one report template built and have it work in any one of your claims regardless of what file you're in. Now if you do decide to create your own report, you can use those as well in the future if you want to. So let me unlock this report. Let's imagine for a second that I created this report from scratch just now. I want to now save this so I can use it again in the future. Once I've made all my edits and inserted merge fields wherever I want them, I could come up to this very first button at the top and select Save as Template Report. When I click that option, I'm given the choice of which group I want to save this particular report to. In this case, I'll select User Templates. And it's going to use the report name by default to name the report. And I'll just give it a custom name here and call it Settlement Instructions 2. And hit OK. So now if I ever want to use that report again, I can come back up and say Insert Template, go to User Templates, and in my User Templates there will be a report called Settlement Instructions 2 and I can drop that into any file that I'm currently working on. So that's how reports work. Now let's go take a look at forms. So I'm going to click cancel here to, to get out of the template library. I'm going to go back over to the claim tree and scroll down to the next section which happens to be forms. And once again I can right click or I can use the form speed button at the top. In this example I'll go ahead and just use the right click option and select new. With forms the library selection comes up immediately and I'm presented with a similar window here that shows all the industry forms that we provide in SimSol. Once again we have different groups of forms and then forms that fall within each group. In standard insurance forms I'm going to go ahead and select the proof of loss form and hit done. Now you'll notice right away in forms we don't have all the different text editor options like we did in reports. You can't edit fonts, you can't change text color, you can't insert tables. These are industry forms that we cannot change in terms of how they look cosmetically. The only thing we can do is change the data that prints on these forms. You'll also notice that the form automatically takes claim information from this file that I'm in and places it in the corresponding fields within the form. For any fields that are not filled out, those would need to be filled out manually or they would take information from your estimates as they are built. You'll notice here that some of those empty fields have these blue boxes around them. If I wanted to edit those, I just simply click in the blue box and that provides me with a field where I can enter the actual claim data that needs to go into that field. And there you'll see it updated that field for me. Over to the left of all the forms will be this grid that shows all the available fields within this particular form and their current state. So fields denoted by red are empty, fields denoted in yellow are overridden fields, meaning I had to change the data in that particular field for some reason, and then finally fields denoted in green which are completed. Your objective is to obviously get all fields to ultimately end up in green. Now some industry forms are quite extensive in terms of how much information needs to go into them. What we've done to make filling out those forms a little bit easier is implemented what's called a form wizard. Let me pull up a form that actually has one in it. So if I go back to forms and right click and select another new one, so from standard insurance forms, this time I'll go over and select the short form report. I'll highlight it and hit done. So the short form report, it's a similar layout. You'll notice the grid over here to the left once again. However, this time at the very top of the grid, there's a button called Form Wizard. The Form Wizard basically just organizes the different fields that need to be filled out for this particular form. You can go through, fill out each form, click Next to complete the wizard, and once you fill out all the forms that need to be filled out, just click Finish, and that'll refresh your form with all the data that needs to be input 
to complete your form. One last note about forms and reports. Any data that you enter into a form or report is saved automatically, especially in forms. Now if we go back to reports, there is a save button, and it might be wise to use that occasionally if you're entering a lot of text. Just come up to the top and click this Save Current Report button to make sure that your work is being saved. But SimSol does incrementally save any information that you're actually typing in live. But as you know, it never hurts to save. So that's Forms and Reports for SimSol, a very useful way of filling out data by taking advantage of merge fields and how forms automatically populate data into your forms without you having to enter it.